So can you tell them a little bit about what goes on backstage before you go out and speak? It's usually you're there about two hours, 90 minutes before your talk. Yep. I usually give you an opportunity to walk on this stage at some point. Yep. But um, like, I mean, just like, what are you eating? Do you have lunch? If it's later, do you not have lunch? Do you have yep. a bar? Um, uh, how do you prepare your notes? What do you bring in your backpack? You know, your rocks, all that stuff. Yeah, I always bring my rocks. I always have lip uh, balm because my lips sometimes get dry. I always have it. I have it usually up there or right backstage. Uh, I have my water, which is already opened, which is already opened and I've already drank from it so that it's, I don't have to like fumble with that. Uh, I have notes. I always have notes. Just reminders if I lose my place. And you, you know when I lose my place, this is when I lose my place. Blah, 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 I'm talking, blah, 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 blah. And I go like this. And I'm looking at my notes. Because <laughs> I don't know where I am. And I'm like, hmm, where am I? And the audience is just patient. They're just like, I guess he's just thirsty. They don't know you didn't for you. They think it's cool that you're not actually speaking. They think you're, they're like, it's so cool that he's drinking water. <laughs> right? All I'm trying to do is find my way. So I just have my notes, and if I'm off or I need to be reminded of something, I look at the note, and then I go. Backstage, backstage, which my mastermind uh, group knows that they go backstage with me. They go on a trip with me. And they meet me in a city, and they see what I do backstage. They see how I prepare to be on stage. And so they see the nutrition, which is usually very light, a bar, like a protein bar, uh, specifically chosen. Um, a lot of water, a lot of hydration. I don't eat anything heavy. I don't eat like a big breakfast or a uh, big meal before it because it starts to, uh, I just don't like the feeling. Um, and um, all I'm doing backstage is trying to free myself up. I'm never going, should I say this or should I say that? Should I do this or should I do that? I'm never get into my dialogue. All I get into is the freedom of this body because I know once I'm free up here, I'm good to go. Things will come out of my mouth that will work. And you've got to trust yourself. That's why all the preparation and rehearsal because you've got to trust yourself when you're up here. I'm just looking for freedom. That's all I'm looking for. And then right afterwards, I'm really depleted after speech. It takes a lot of energy to be in front of people. Um, they've done a test where they attach electrodes to performers on stage. And they say two hours on stage in front of people is like a, a steel worker's 12-hour shift. Same energy is, is, is expended. 12 hours in a steel mill. Two hours on stage. Because you have to keep them alive. You've got to keep them there. You've got to work your ass off. That's why you sweat. But you've got to be drinking. You've got to be hydrated. As soon as I go off, I'm immediately getting protein and greens into my body to uh, uh, fix the depletion so I can go the next day or so that I can go for the later uh, thing. A lot of energy to be great on stage. A lot. I know it looks smooth and it looks easy. It takes a lot of energy to be smooth. You know, those tennis players, when they play, they just go like this. Bam. Bam. Do you know how long it takes to swing a racket like that? How long it takes to be smooth and effortless it takes forever. So preparation is the key. Um, uh, what else did you ask? Well, no, just, I mean, I think you answered just, you know, what you do backstage and yeah. how you prepare. And, um, and, oh, the first thing I do when I'm on stage, people go, oh, what's the first thing, you, you know, the, right when you're coming on stage, what do you do? I say I try to find somebody. I find, and my, I just go to the most energetic person. Whoever has the good energy, I go right, I just, my instincts go right to them. And I go, boom. And I go, this is my guy right here. Uh, Jefferson, where's Jefferson? Jefferson was that guy. I did a, 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 a four-day conference, and it was like 500, maybe 600 people in there. And Jefferson was sitting right in here. And I never met him before. I go, that's my guy. Four days, that's my guy. That is my guy. That's my anchor. And I did a seminar for four days to Jefferson. <laughs> right? But he grounded me. He connected me to the group because he's got amazing energy. And I didn't know he played football. And then I later find out he's a football player and all, all this stuff. And, and you know, I don't know if that was the reason. But I always find somebody. And I lock into them. And that's my person. And I'll, I can do a, this whole three days with you guys to one person. And everybody thinks I'm only talking to them because it's so personal between us two. That's why when you speak to groups, you speak to nobody. You speak to a person, you speak to everybody. 
That's the biggest mistake speakers make is they just, they're not, it's too, it's way, it's so risky and makes you vulnerable to connect to a person. It's much easier to not connect and talk to a group. Hey group, I'm talking right over your heads. I don't see you. I don't even know what you're thinking. I don't even care. But when I'm working, I'm looking and I'm going, what's he thinking? Does he got to go to the bathroom? Is that dude hungry? That dude's freaking hungry. He's a mutt. He wants to eat. Who's she? Is she liking this? I'm like, I'm present to everybody. I know what's going on, right? But that makes you and me connected. That's a whole different experience. That's why you don't look away. That's why people don't mill around in my events. You know, you go to events and people are like walking, and they're talking, and they're like walking. They're, they're everywhere. But no one ever does that in this event. No one does it. It's not allowed. It's not allowed. Because it's an intention on my part. I don't allow it. You want to do that? You want to be casual? You want to be able to walk in the park? Go to somebody else's event. And that's what I tell them at the point of sale. If you're not a pro, if you're an amateur, you ain't coming in. And there's going to be a sign when you enter. And it's going to say, absolutely no admittance. Players only beyond this point. If you can't cross that threshold, you're out. But isn't that what... That isn't, that's what you desire, though, too, right? That's what you have to start demanding of your customers. They've got to be players. They can't be like slackers. That's what you demand of your customers. And you watch what happens to your business. Your business goes through the roof, and you're surrounded by people you love and respect. Like the people that I'm talking about, like Rocky and Michael and Jefferson and Scott Mann and Dan Caldwell and Liz Lerner. And on and on and go. it goes. Tiffany, Lynn, that's how it goes. I get to work with people that I respect, that I love. And I don't work with anybody else. Like if somebody's, can you imagine somebody working with me that's like, um, hey, Bo, I'm not really clear on what we're doing. <laughs> Out. Out. That's a way of surviving. Confusion is a way of surviving. We are not confused. We are not. Everybody got it? You must demand this of your people. And watch the people that rise to the occasion, like you. You write, look, but look. Most people do events, right? They got like a thousand people in the room, right? That's, that's cool, right? But imagine this. With a th I, I, th th there might not be a thousand people on the planet that can do this. You know what I mean? You got to be able to play. It, I, dem I demand everything that you've got. I'm asking you to take the most shameful thing in your life, the thing that you've tried to guard your whole life, and I'm asking you to use it as gold. That's very risky. You need a very safe environment to do that. That's what, that's what Dawn does. That's what our team provides. But in the end, you're employed for the rest of your life. They can take your bank accounts. They can take your homes. They can take your cars. They can take your family away from you. But you have a platform and you have a story. You can make that money back. You can make that family back in 90 days because you're controlling your own, your own career. Everybody got it? Yeah. We're no longer at the mercy of a government or of the powers that be or somebody choosing you or hiring you. I used to wait for the phone to ring. That was my, as an actor, that was my business. I would wait. And Tom Cruise was taking that shit. He wasn't waiting, he was taking it. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna choose me. I'm gonna create my own way. And from that moment on, I don't ever have to wait for the phone to ring again. Take your life into your own hands. Sweetheart? Did I answer the question? <laughs> I forget what the questions are. I actually, I have to, that's something I have to tell him a lot. I'm like, if somebody asks a question, just answer the question. <laughs> and then you can expand. We, we argue about this backstage sometimes. Um, don't, okay. don't, don't let them know about our little spats. <laughs>